Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy with Sickle Bros. In today's video, we're gonna be building this big plywood aquarium. In the previous video, I built the stand for this tank. And I also revealed some of the dimensions and just how big this is really gonna be. But we'll kind of recap that and then we'll go through the next steps of the build. Can't wait to get to it, so let's dive right in. So I'm gonna give a quick 30 second recap on how I got to this point, as well as what we're gonna be doing next and showing that. I'm also going to be making some updates to the room around the tank like I mentioned in the last video, starting to paint the walls and just get everything in this nook of my basement looking much better. But if you remember from the previous video, I built the tank stand. I built the tank stand out of 2x4s, some upright guides and supports, and then I used 2x6s for kind of those box frames that will be supporting the weight underneath the plywood aquarium. Similar to an acrylic aquarium, you do need support all the way through the bottom of the tank, not just the edge like you would for a glass aquarium. But I took inspiration from this tank stand from Aquarium Domain, another great YouTuber, and I followed his footprint. I just have a slightly bigger tank than the How To series that he put together. But this really was pretty straightforward. The tank stand looked pretty good and I had the seamless sump underneath just to kind of dry fit where everything was going to go. But before I got to the plywood cutting, I did make a few modifications to the stand just to reinforce the strength. Because this is my first time making a tank stand of this size, I did want to make a few modifications. So just picking up where we left off, this is the tank stand. And since the last video, I made a couple additions to this. You might be able to see that this front panel here, this two by six, is now attached to the front. Like I said in the last video, it's not structural, uh, but when I'm finishing the stand and wrapping it, that will be something I can screw into. And then I also added two by fours down here with a couple L brackets. So this just kind of helps support the legs a little bit more. I don't think it's totally needed and it probably is overkill, but if an extra 25 bucks is gonna save me some sleep at night, then I'll definitely take that. So. Uh, also, there's two by sixes that were put on the back, just like the front. So it's totally square or rectangular all the way around. So with the tank stand reinforced and ready to go, it was time to cut the plywood sheets. I had three plywood sheets of five ply birch plywood, and I didn't really have a workbench in my garage, so this wasn't really the ideal setup. I kind of made a makeshift table with supports on both sides, and I used a two by four as the guide for my circular saw. I did borrow this from a friend. I've never used a circular saw before. And like I said, this is not a how-to series. This is my first time using a lot of these tools and first time building a plywood aquarium. So definitely go check out some of those more experienced YouTubers before trying this on your own. I did find the plywood sheet cutting to be a little intimidating just because they are such big pieces of plywood and kind of hard to maneuver on your own. But I was really meticulous with the measurements I wanted to make. The whole saying, measure twice, cut once. I definitely followed with these plywood sheets since they were one of the more expensive parts of the overall build. So I was making the bottom sheet of plywood 76 and a half by 42 inches. That is the footprint of the tank, which is roughly 475 gallons when you calculate the sump volume as well. But I also needed to make the two side panels, which came from one of the sheets of plywood, and then the back panel, which was just the height of the tank, which was 34 inches plus the 75 inches. I did have to remove about an inch and a half where the two side panels meet at the corners. Okay, so I just got the bottom panel on as a dry fit. It's 76 and a half inches long, 42 inches front to back, and there's Rambo on top of it. So thanks Rambo for the size and scale comparison here. By the way, Rambo's a big old cat, so big tank. But I will say when cutting the plywood sheets, the trickiest part was trying to get a straight line with a circular saw. So I had that two by four guide but also to make sure you had a level support so that when you started cutting, that neither side of the plywood started to move. That is where you get a little bit of a blowout on the tips of the plywood sheets, so you definitely don't want that. It was a little bit of trial and error, but for the most part, I had some really clean cuts. But once I got all the plywood sheets cut, it was time to get them down to my basement, and I got them dry fitted on the tank stand right now. It's pulled out just a few inches so I could get the clamps on the corners and the back corners. And overall, the seams look really good. I'm very happy with this. Obviously, if you had any uneven seams meeting, you would probably need to redo that. It's probably one of the most important parts of the plywood build, in my opinion, 
because the fiberglass and the epoxy that comes later on isn't really gonna make up for that difference in the wood cutting. So I really took my time and I actually didn't film myself in action cutting the plywood just because I was so focused on doing this correctly. But now that I have this here, it's all dry fitted, all the seams look good, and it's all lined up. And it's now time to glue and screw this together. So this is also gonna be quite a process because these big panels are pretty heavy and maneuvering them around to get them to glue in place and screw is a challenge. So I'm either gonna be shifting it around on this tank stand or pulling off a couple of the panels at a time. So we're gonna start using the wood glue and screws to get all these panels connected. We're gonna put it back on the stand, put it in place. And also this whole stand and tank is gonna be going against the wall over there. So it won't be blocking the window totally or the fuse box. And like I said, we're gonna be making some cosmetic updates to this room in this video kind of in tandem here so let's get to gluing and screwing and then we'll make the window frame after that we have started to screw and glue these into place so the bottom panel is tilted up these are the two side panels this one is just clamped on for kind of support and to line it up but this one I have already glued it pressed it into place clamped it and screwed all along the bottom into this panel. So I'll show you that in a sec. So you can see the seam is really tight, which is what you're looking for. And there's a little bead of glue, wood glue sticking out. So you just take a little bit of a, a damp rag and wipe off the excess glue. But overall the seam looks really good. And uh, I'll see if I have to touch anything up later, but right now I think it's all good to go on this seam. Here's the other side of that seam. You can see all the screws going down to seal that really nicely. And I had a drop cloth at the bottom just to catch any of that excess glue so it's not on my floor. But uh, I think there's probably 15 to 20 screws in there. And I was just really careful that I wasn't screwing to the left or right of the side panel and having it poke out. And luckily everything went good on this one. So on to number two. The back panel is in place. That is what you're seeing front and center here. It is connected to these two side panels. So if you come over here, you'll see all of the screws. There are a ton of screws every inch or so, along with the glue, of course. And I showed the side panels, how they had glued already, and now that's kind of dried, but you can see the glue is still drying on that back panel. So overall, it went really smoothly. The measurements were correct. It was a really tight fit for that back panel, which is a good thing. Um, a few issues I did have, if you look pretty closely there, you'll see a screw poking out, so I have to remove that. And I also had the same thing happen in the back corner there. So a couple of screws, when I was screwing up from the back, um, popped out through the back panel. So I'm gonna have to remove those and use some wood fill to fill in those gaps and then sand it over and make sure those are extremely well fiberglass as well in the next stage. So should be completely fine. And it's kind of funny that I had the same issue that Aquarium Domain had and he explained how he fixed it and how it's not an issue at all as long as you take the appropriate steps. So his how-to videos are literally saving me. I thought this whole project would have been finished after I saw that first screw pop out. Um, but outside of that, everything looks great. Okay, so we got the tank in place, and as you can see, we added the window frame. So these are two by fours, and they are cut and stacked in a way that they have structural support. The verticals are supporting the tops, and it goes all the way up to the top of the plywood. So the next step here will be screwing it into the plywood frame and into the tank stand. Right now the tank can shift a little bit, so we'll get it locked into place on the stand and they're just being held by the clamps, but this gives an overall view of what the tank is gonna be, and there's gonna be a big glass panel here, which is coming in the next couple of days. We have a few steps before that glass panel, like fiberglassing and the pond shield, 
which will take a while with multiple coats and that really waterproofs the aquarium. But then we will add the glass panel, silicone it, and we will be showing those steps very soon. But this is a pretty big milestone because we have the whole structure of the aquarium in place. And in tandem with the tank build here, I have been starting on the cosmetic updates to the room itself. I applied a fresh coat of paint and we're starting to hide some of the imperfections on the wall, painting some of the odds and ends that stick out in this room but there will be another coat of paint and some touch-ups happening as well as some trim work that will really make this whole room look aesthetically pleasing and a place that I'll always wanna be and hanging out with this big new plywood aquarium. And also I forgot to mention that before starting on the fiberglassing and the pond shield, I will be adding a few more bracing and support for the tank, including uh, a two by four in the back there, two by twos here, and then a couple supports on around the tank as well. So I'll show that at the beginning of the next video and then we'll show the fiberglassing and the pump shield. Okay guys, so I'm very excited to have this stage of the build completed. This was one that was stressing me out a little bit just because I'm not super handy with like power tools and I've never even used a circular saw before, but cutting the plywood sheets was a little bit challenging, but overall it wasn't too hard and then cutting the two by fours was really easy with a miter saw and just getting the measurements correct is the main thing. I will say there is a lot of screwing and gluing in this process. Getting that back panel in place with glue all around all the edges and having a tight fit was a challenge. There's a couple spots of wood glue that I have to sand down and obviously there are a couple screws that poked out in the back panel that I had to remove and will fill with wood fill before I start the next step, which is fiberglassing, which really reinforces the seams, especially of this tank. And after that, we will do multiple coats of pond shield, and I will be showing all of that in the next video, hopefully. But I'm very excited to have at least the tank build ready and some of the other renovations in my basement starting to happen. And it's pretty much a war zone down here, but a lot of big things are coming and I can't wait for it all to come into place and really tie the room together. And like I said, this is not a how-to series. This is me following some of my own research and watching a lot of YouTubers to do this the best that I can, and I'm trying my best to not have this thing leak. But if you are trying to build your own plywood aquarium, highly recommend you check out Aquarium Domain. Jeremy is awesome, and he has some massive plywood aquariums, so definitely check him out. I definitely took a lot of inspiration and tips and tricks from Joey, the king of DIY. I watched all of his plywood aquarium builds as well. And if you're looking to build your own plywood tank, I would definitely watch Aquarium Domain and Joey, the king of DIY, and just research as much as you can, and I think you totally can do it. So far, things have gone really smoothly with this aquarium. There have been a few minor errors, like the screws in the back panel and some measurements I cut wrong and had to recut. but. Overall, this is totally a manageable project, and that's coming from someone with no experience with plywood tanks or DIY projects in general. Um, I'm just kind of learning as I go, but I also am following some of the greats and some of the research out there, so thanks again to them. And thanks again to you for following along with the build. Can't wait to show the next couple stages of this project will be coming very soon. I'm getting to work on it now, so thanks again, guys. We'll see you next time.